Today, for the first time in 20 months, were sumo fans allowed in from the start. Thus, for the first time on this channel, do we have bouts from all six divisions. And important ones too. It's a mental challenge to go straight into an empty arena first thing in the morning and contest a title. But that is what these two tough men did in only the day's second match. 30-year-old Mifune Yama was in Division 3 last year. At the time, opponent Seto no Umi, 17, was just turning pro. But it was the teenager who triumphed. I was so nervous, Setonoumi disclosed, and I'm not surprised after Coach Takadagawa told him to prepare to die for the win. A cervical spine fracture in February training had ruled him out for the past three meets, exactly half as long as his also injured opponent. Coach told me not to charge head first, so I'd been going in hands to chest, he continued. I got back to full fitness by strengthening the neck each day and lifting weights in towels, things like that. He aims to emulate teenage stablemate Otsuji and his hero, Abi. The Division 5 honours were also here to claim 18-year-old Kotakiyama who missed July, took on 24-year-old Hitoshi, better known as Hitoshi Sawada, a Nihon University fighter who turned pro in May. And Hitoshi eased through with that forceful parry and push. I couldn't win Division 6 in July despite expectations, so it's a relief to come top this time, said a man under pressure to succeed. I nearly didn't turn pro, you know, and actually started work at my university, but loads of amateur sumo events were cancelled due to Covid, and turning pro was a good way to fight. I now want to be in Division 3 by January, and one day to be like university senior Endo. Three fourth division men reached the final round of fixtures unbeaten, two of them from the same stable and therefore kept apart. The first key match thus saw Fujishima stable's Suguro take on ex bodybuilder Asakishin. Oh, how unapt! Suckered by a lightning sidestep. What does Asakishin's coach make of that, let alone his macho gym buddies? That result rendered this match the title decider. Suguro's stablemate Fujiseun, Division 5 runner-up in Nagoya, locking horns with ex-Division 3 man Narutaki, who's back after four months out. And Fujiseun unbalanced his foe to land the title and a third straight promotion. I've gained confidence from fighting salaried level Bushozan at the stable, said the Meiji University grad, who's still unbeaten in 21 regulation bouts. But I didn't think I'd be champion given the jump in level from Division 5. The power and initial charges are totally different here. Wednesday this week saw Saitama Sakai grad Kitanowaka crush out Unigrad Ishizaki to win six straight and earn the right to tackle Fukai for the third division crown. For lower ranked Fukai, a finalist in student nationals, today's rewards would be pride and prizes. 
For Kitano Waka, though, the reward would be far greater. A salary and a place in Division 2. He'd never known a bout like it. Oh, and the youngster froze up. The dreams, the plans, the effort, all down the sink in that one frenetic moment. You wonder if colleague Hokuto Fuji's pullout was a bad omen. I'm the nervous type, but I didn't get swallowed up in the moment like I expected, said Victorious Fukai, who praised band colleague Asanoyama for his practice ring support. Now, he says, I want to shoot for Division 2 in November. At that level today, Kitanowaka's loss made this first bout less climactic than intended, seemingly assuring Hirado Umi of salary promotion beforehand. Hirado, however, didn't see things that way, against a man hell-bent on protecting his own salary. And truly superb use of angles suggests he's primed to excite at this level in November. The swearing incident is all forgotten. In the divisional title race, Abi drew first blood by absorbing Kotoshoho's parry and firing into the chest. It was therefore up to Nishiki Fuji to keep pace. But streetwise veteran Sadano Umi impeded him and confirmed his own return to Division 1 in the process. In the top tier then, for those of you worried that yesterday was a false dawn, here's something soothing. Tochinoshin clearly still has it. That throw was the only option left. How on earth did I pull that off? The victor said. But that act of resistance paled in comparison with this sinew straining one. That's Sumo's second oldest man, Shoketsu, clinging on at the rope, showing commitment to shame kids a third his age. And although the 45-year-old eventually lost, he can toast the miracle of knees unsnapped and head uncracked. Unlike luckless Tomokaze, though, whose spine must have chilled upon this uncanny reconstruction of the landing which injured him. Switching back to Emperor's Cup contenders, and Okinomi blundered to ruin his chances. But Endo matched his Day 13 score in Glorious May against fast-fading Kiribayama. Tedonofuji's two remaining pursuers were paired with Ozeki, in theory, to make their pursuits harder. But this theory only holds when the Ozeki have something to strive for, and that was not the case today. It thus seemed inevitable that Miyogiryu would break his 13-match duck against Takakesho. And I had to chuckle when he put it down to not overthinking things. Certainly not compared to an opponent who's going, he's my high school senior, one-time hero and mentor, going for the title, nearly 35, might not get another chance, and I owe him for his support, and this title race needs to be close. Shodai, just as safe as Takakesho, had no reason to win against Ornashaw, and despite making things tough, seemed to hold back when it mattered. It was good I stayed cool when shoved backwards, then got right inside of him, said Onosho. But it would have been yet better for everyone had he faced the Yokozuna. Not facing surprise packages until the last possible moment, though, is a Yokozuna's privilege. 
meaning Tedo no Fuji enjoyed the relative comforts of a bout with Mitake Umi. It was a far from vintage performance, with rhythm disrupted well by Mitake's curving charge and forearm smash, but height advantage and iron grip kept Tedu safe and in pole position for the final weekend. He's also claimed the award for most wins this calendar year, with a staggering 17 tournament days to spare. He could still take the cup tomorrow if every result goes his way. Here are the bouts to watch. And thank you for taking part in this experiment to showcase all six divisions in one post. I'm not sure it's viable to spend an extra three to five hours each day on videos, but the fact remains that over two thirds of sumo wrestlers fight in divisions four to six, and the flavor of a full sumo day can scarce be conveyed without them.